Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. This week we're taking a look at some of the great culture that happens in Kingston, much of it at the Ulster Performing Arts Center. We're also going to talk to a group of people who want to bring free outdoor movies to some of Kingston City's parks this summer. First, though, it's Chris Silva, the executive director of both the Bar Devon in Poughkeepsie and UPAC in Kingston. Hi, Chris. Hey, Jimmy. So you've got a, an interesting background. I, I saw you profiled in Ulster Magazine back mm -hmm. in, I think it was January. Mm -hmm. And you were, what, an actor and a director? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. in San Francisco in the good old days, in the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, I started a theater in a commune in on Pine Street in San Francisco. And we got closed down very quickly by the police. But then we moved to a church basement, which always makes a great theater. And we did a lot of great stuff back in those days for no money and... Uh, and we built up a great reputation, and that's where I learned, uh, I learned a lot from that, yeah. So how did you end up in the Hudson Valley? You've been running the Bardavon since, what, 1994 or Exactly, yeah, yeah, 94. Well, I, I moved to New York City in 79, and I did a lot of uh, producing and directing there for a number of years. And um, I met my wife there, Casey Curdy, who's a writer. And I produced uh, one of her plays uh, by in the late 80s. And it got picked up by Columbia Pictures, and they gave us a big bag of money. And um, we were like, well, do we want to blow it in New York? Or we used to visit the Hudson Valley a lot. My wife went to SUNY New Paltz, so we ha she had friends up here. So we, we, re we knew the area, so we said, well, let's look. And, and we, you know, we, went. we looked, we found, we moved, and you know, never regret it. We raised our family here, and it's, you know, it's beautiful here. So. So you've been running the Bardavon for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and then a few years back, you uh, uh, struck up a partnership to run UPAC in Kingston here in Kingston. Yeah. How did that come about? Well, we were, uh, before that, actually, in 1999, we took over the Hudson Valley Philharmonic, who had fallen on bad times. And that ended up being a very successful move for us and for the orchestra. And then in 2005, uh, we were approached by members of the board of UPAC, uh, about helping uh, solve their problems. And, um, and basically we came to the conclusion that the best way to solve the problem was to take over the operation um, because it's a lot of work to transform a space. And, um, and that's what we did. In, in 06, we began managing it. By 07, uh, we had merged uh, the operation into ours. You know, the, the theater had a lot of debt, some of which we're still carrying. It had a lot of capital uh, issues. We solved almost $2 million worth of, worth of uh, problems when we first took over. But mostly what we did was to bring really top artists on a regular basis uh, into the space. And in 06, 07, and into 08, it was like a house of fire. We really were delivering a lot of great artists. I mean, you know, it's who's who. I mean, from Queen Latifah to Lou Reed to Yo-Yo Ma and Itzhak Perlman to you name it. I mean, it was just, it was great. And, and we continue to do that, though, you know, the last few years has been difficult for us and for everybody in the world uh, since the recession hit. So, you know, we continue to bring top artists, but it's harder and harder. Tell me about the facility itself, um, yeah. the, uh, the, the theater that is UPAC. Well, it's a great, it's a beautiful space. It's 1927 is when it was built, which therein lies some of the problems. But um, if you, anybody old, owns an old house and you have 1,500 people walking through it every week, you know, a lot of wear and tear. Um, but the HVAC system is really in bad shape, and we're just sort of gaffer taping it together until we can raise the funds to, re to replace it, really. Um, We've done a lot of facade work to stop leaks from coming in the bricks and mortar. We've done a lot of roof work. We've done some plumbing. Um, like I say, we've done almost $2 million worth of work. But there's easily $3 million worth of work left to do. More roofs, more bricks and mortar. Um, the restroom situation is ridiculous. I mean, there's like three restrooms, three toilets down on the first floor, and there's a 1,000 seats. So you can imagine. Um, though people deal, I mean, the audiences are great, but also the space, it has 500, 600 more seats than the Bardavon, 1,500 seats. So it, it allows us to bring bigger acts without charging enormous ticket prices. And, um, and it also allows us to actually earn money, to make money, which is important in our operation. Um, and the acoustics in the place are fantastic. I mean, it's a great, great hall for anything, for classical music or rock and roll, it doesn't really matter, or speakers, Garrison Keillor, love the space, he's been there a couple times. I mean, it's, you know, the city of Kingston is very fortunate to have 
uh, a theater like UPAC, and, and we're very fortunate to be running it. And indeed, I've, I've read that it's the only theater of its size between New York and Albany. So they say. So they say. That's what they Terrific. say. Yeah. We'll talk more about that when we come back. All okay? right, great. You're watching Kingston Now. More with Chris Silva in a moment. Welcome back to Kingston Now. This week we're talking about some of the great shows and events in Kingston with Chris Silva, the executive director of the Ulster Performing Arts Center. And, and Chris, how important is culture to a city, particularly Kingston? Critically, critical importance. Uh, you know, it's not just the shows on the stage, it's what it does economically uh, for the city. Uh, every time we have a show, there could be 1,000 to 1,500 people show up. A lot of those people go out to d eat dinner before or after the show, and that fills, I mean, we basically fill most of the restaurants in Kingston, uptown, midtown, and downtown, every time we do a show, because people like to make a night of it. Plus, gas stations benefit, babysitters benefit. You know, there's a whole trickle down economic uh, benefit to us doing shows. But for the audience, it's an uplift. It's, a, it's like a, a it's like a soul connector for people because they they come into the theater, you know, with anticipation and excitement. But 99 percent of the time they leave high off whatever it is they saw, whether it was a classical performance or or rock and roll or a reading. It doesn't matter. It takes them to some other place. And that's important in the world. It's you know, we didn't invent culture. The Greeks did. And they did it for a really good reason, you know, because it moves people. It makes people better. What are the events you have coming up then? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, well, coming right up uh, for this, uh, Caesar Milan, The Dog Whisperer, is coming April 6th. That's selling very fast, so if you haven't gotten tickets yet, you should get them. Now, that, is that people only, that show? People only, thank you, yes. <laughs> no dogs allowed. Caesar will bring a couple of dogs himself, and he'll do a demo, mm -hmm. and it'll be intermission, and then he's going to do Q&A um, after. Uh, we have... Uh, we just booked Willie Nelson. He's coming in May, May 13th. Um, Gordon Lightfoot's coming in May also. Levon Helm will be doing his annual birthday bash in late May. We just added G-Love and the Wood Brothers to that show. And also, there's always surprises. You never know who might drop in. Um, Creed, we just booked, uh, end of April. Joan Rivers is coming. Um, who am I forgetting? Oh, the Hudson Valley Philharmonic is doing this huge Van Ver Caravan explosion, explosion of dance and music, uh, March 31. Um, what else? Um, tons of stuff. I mean, it, it really never stops. And you have movies, too, you show. Yeah, we have movies. We do show classic movies. Mm -hmm. We show Metropolitan Opera live broadcasts. Uh, we have a lot of rentals from community groups, Catskill Ballet, Ulster Ballet. They do great work on our stage every, every season, really. Uh, and there'll be surprises. I mean, we're always looking for terrific acts. When you're booking those terrific acts, how, how are you factoring in the area? Like, you know, from Creed to Gordon Lightfoot, that's a... <laughs> yeah, you know. well, that says the area. That's the area. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, you know, it, it people... Uh, you know, the Hudson Valley is amazing. I mean, it has a huge uh, cross-section of, of people. It's very eclectic. Uh, and so people can like everything from Creed to Gordon Lightfoot to Willie to Joan Rivers. It, you know, we'll probably pack the house for every single one of those shows because that audience is here and they come from a distance. And you get to see all the shows. Yeah, I love seeing the shows. Uh -huh. And meeting the artists and, and, and some of them are just, uh, like Tony Bennett, we just had at the Bardavon uh, last weekend, what a sweetheart he was. I mean, and some of them are incredibly personable and want to hang out with you. Bill Cosby, for instance, um, when we went to meet him uh, in the dressing room, he asked Isla and I, this, the house manager, sit down join me. And he just wanted to talk. And so we just hung out with Bill, you know, and then we had people coming backstage. He wanted to hang out with everybody. So it was, uh, you know, it's like that, you know, was, they're all different. But Though the ultimate perk was Bob Dylan oh, renting the Bardavon. Yes, that's heaven. That was, to, I was in tell heaven. us that story. Well, he three times they rented the hall over a period of a couple of years. To, to rehearse, rehearse, right? To, to rehearse. And the first time he was writing Modern Times, and um, I got to sit in the wings and watch him create new work, which I never in my life would think I would get to do that. And it was fascinating to watch how he puts together his songs. And then the other two times were straight rehearsals. But the third time, and I don't know how this happened, but I was hanging out in the alley, and he likes to go for walks. And he came up to me, right up to me, and said, what's happening, man? And I said, what do you mean, Bob? 
And he said, where's all the black people? I said, <laughs> what do you mean? They're here. <laughs> you just don't see them. And uh, so we started talking about gentrification, and which apparently is a favorite subject to his. And we had three 30-minute conversations during that week. And when he left, he thanked me. He practically hugged me. I was like in love, you know? And um, yeah, it was, that was a mind blower. Uh, that's, that I will always remember. Tell me about the, uh, the immediate future for you, Pac, beyond these shows that we're talking about. Is it the HVAC that's important to get fixed? Yeah, Is, yeah. well, mm -hmm. we're actually, we're going, I'm actually tonight, I'm going uh, to Kingston to, to uh, ask for money for, uh, to fix the uh, two columns that hold the portico, the entrance of the theater. They're, co they're collapsing, and I'm, I'm looking for support. There's always something. Terrific. And there's always great events at UPAC. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. This is Kingston Now, and next we're going to talk to a movement in Kingston to bring free movies to city parks this summer. Stay with us. You're watching Kingston Now. Movies Under the Stars is the idea, and here to talk about what that means and what is needed to make that happen is Andy Turco Levin, David Daw, and our returning champion, Janae McDonough. Janae, how are you? I'm good. We're going to have to get you a co host seat. You've been That'd on the show. Be good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a, another, um, uh, it's not entirely your idea, but it's no. another idea that, has sort of, that you're sort of taking on and, and, and driving with the help of lots of other good people. Yeah. Tell me about um, how it came to pass that uh, Movies Under the Stars is now on the radar here. Um, well, it's something that's been in the works. Um, we've had movies in the stars in the past, um, in the parks, and it just stopped because basically what happened was Parks and Rec ran out of money. Uh, you know, the budget wasn't there. Um, the movie equipment that they had was, it basically disappeared. And at this point, um, we want to do something to bring the community back together. And what better way to do that than to be able to have families and community members and neighbors come out and watch an, a free movie in the park, go from park to park, so that you know everybody's involved, and it's not a midtown, uptown, downtown. It's an entire city that's going to be able to come out and just spend time together. So, so Janae, what what has to happen for this to come to pass? Um, we need to raise seventeen thousand um, dollars. That's going to cover the purchase of the projector, the projector and the screen. Um, it also needs to cover the uh, royalties for each picture and that we we play. Um, then everything else is basically volunteer. I mean, we have our committee and the volunteers who will be the ones that will go out and run the projection, um, you know, clean up in the parks afterward, uh, just make sure that everything's put together and, you know, it's going to be all community-based. And then after the purchase, the equipment will actually go to the Parks and Rec Department. So they can use it during the winter to show films at the community center. Um, the you know the different children's home can use it to show movies at the at you know at their place as well. So it's something that's going to get a lot of use. It's not just going to be an, an, an eight week summer thing. It's going to be the whole thing itself. Well, sound is something that David Daw can address because you have a studio here in Kingston, and you are also the musical director for a fundraising event that we're going to talk about in just a couple moments about. But ha how do you project the sound for a movie into a crowd of a thousand people? I actually wasn't covering that part of it thing, but oh. uh, it's, it's pretty easy. We hired him um, to bring the music in. Yeah, okay. I'm doing the music, so that's music. my part and everything. But uh, I had, um, as far as sound for that, you would definitely want a, a you know, full PA system with subwoofers and everything so you get the impact. And I'm sure we're probably going to do something with a, a surround system. Yeah. I don't know if that'll be right off the bat. depends on money. But if enough money comes in, then we would do a surround system through the whole uh, outdoor area, which would really be a nice impact for the for the movies themselves. Have you thought about what kind of movies you're going to show? We have. We've discussed that a bit at the committee level and um, we were talking about putting getting some movies out there and letting people vote on what they'd like to see yeah. to get some audience participation and some uh, from the community to get some input to see what kind of movies they would like to see. I mean we, we have to be talking though about sort of They've got family, to be family friendly, movies. Right? Yes. They have to yeah. be family no friendly. RRX rated movies here. Yeah. No, right. No. <laughs> Not outdoors anyhow. Right. No. Uh -huh. um, and I think by bringing it out to people to be able to vote is going to be a good thing because then it it builds some excitement. Just like the, the logo, Janae did a uh, organized a logo 
contest yeah. for local yeah, schools. Sure. And yeah. you can see um, from our flyer that uh, we got a lot of entries, and yes. that was a really great program too. Yeah, got a lot yeah. of kids in schools involved. The kids were involved, and and that's what I like the best: the fact that you know this was something that you know they were really excited about. They got involved in it. Um, Karina is the the young lady who. Um, she won the the logo contest, and it's it's such a boost for them because now, you know, she's going to see this. She did this. She was involved in it. Um, the other children that were involved will have a scrolling marquee on our website, which is um, uh, movies. What is it KingstonParksMovies.com? Um, they're actually going to have a, a scrolling marquee of all their artwork that they turned in. So. Even though there's a winner, everybody's still going to get recognition because they did such a great job. Yeah. I mean, I was so excited by, and I voted for everybody, so. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, let, let's talk about how you raise $17,000 for equipment when we come back. This is Kingston Now and more about Movies Under the Stars when we return. Welcome back to Kingston Now. We're talking about free movies in city parks this summer, Movies Under the Stars. And with us again is Andy Turco Levin, David Daw, and Janae McDonough. And as I said, going into the break, how do you raise $17,000 for movie equipment? What's the plan? Andy. <laughs> All right. A lot of fundraising, a lot of team effort, and uh, a lot of energy. I think we've got the queen of energy sitting next to me, Janae. She's like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, Jen Fuentes. Yes who has been uh, the other Energizer Bunny in this in organization, has done a really great job. They so far have been organized, let's see, we've got raffle tickets that are f out there. Yes. We've done a bowling fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, uh, bake sales. We are constantly out uh, with our message at the farmer's markets, mm -hmm. different businesses. And of course, this concert that we have com coming up in a couple of weeks, which is uh, March 24th at the Old Dutch Church. That's actually this weekend. Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> Time is coming up so quickly. Tell me about the concert. Uh, now that's where David comes in. You're, you're right. the musical coordinator for the, the that's concert. That's my part, I guess. <laughs> so, so you were the guy who had to go get the talent? I dug them all up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and who did you dig up first, David? We dug up, uh, who do we have? Charlie Nicely and Bob Shout. They're doing, uh, they have an act called 2.0. And it's, uh, Charlie plays bass and uh, um, Bob is a sax player. And uh, mm -hmm. it's an amazing. We basically went and found all the top musicians in town and people that are active in the town and uh, that, you know, really want to see this Movies Under the Stars work and uh, just pulled them all together. And we have. Um, uh, well, my Rashawn. husband, Tony. We have this guy called, <laughs> I was say, this guy <laughs> have this guy yeah. called Tony Levin. He's yeah. pretty, pretty fancy. Yeah. He's done a few things in life and uh, kind of basically. Well, let, let's not be shy. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what Tony's done. That's your department. Most notably, he's, he's <laughs> most you know say a lot of things at home, but I won't go there. All right. <laughs> well, most notably, he's played with. Um, he's Peter Gabriel. Um, most people understand and know, recognize him from his work with Peter Gabriel and his work with King Crimson. He uh, is a session player from the '70s and on upwards, and playing with everyone from John Lennon to <laughs> Paul Simon mm -hmm. to Pink Floyd, and. Um, so, I mean, you know, Tony's just uh, really generous in being able to give us his time in doing this. The, th the part I'm most excited about is Rebecca Martin, who's also a huge community advocate and plays a large role in, in bettering our city. With the Kingston Land Trust, With yeah. the Kingston Land Trust. And uh, Tony and Rebecca are going to be playing together, performing together, and I think that's going to be really exceptional. Now, she's and married to a bass player, too, isn't yeah, she? Larry, Larry yeah, Larry Grenadier, one, who's a yeah. wonderful bass player, Another. but Larry's on the road, so what better? So the two of them, they were rehearsing at our house the other day, and I was just so excited to see the two of them play together. And, of course, we have to keep it all in the family, so my brother-in-law, Pete, <laughs> who's an out amazing keyboard player, is uh, taking part as well. So We have Michonne Taylor. We also have terrific uh, vocalist. Harvey, yeah. Harvey mm -hmm. Sorgan, who was uh, the drummer with Hot Tuna. and. Yeah countless others, I can't even think of everybody, but he has his jazz trio coming and that's going to be absolutely amazing. Great. I, before we get to w the tickets and information, I just have to ask, when you're driving in the car with Tony and a song comes on the radio, does he ever turn to you and say, yeah, I played on that? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember <laughs> he first. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> the funny right, part so is, every other song he did play. Song. Right. Yeah. Which he really did. What song what didn't he, he play on? What he listens to the radio, though, would you would be surprised. It's usually classical music. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised, and I, and I hope he's gotten over the. Our uh, musical taste is so different. And I hope he's gotten over the Super Bowl. I know he's a big New England Patriot fan. Yeah. It's so okay. <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> The concert is this weekend yes. at the Old Dutch Church. Is it going to be in the church itself proper? It's in the church in the proper. Church when Which is the, beautiful. The acoustics are amazing, so it's going to be a real treat. And tickets are available where? Tickets are available now at Boydson's at 47 North Front Street um, and also at Bergevin's Florist mm -hmm. on the corner of Main and Fair Street, across from the county office building. And they will be available at the door, of course. And they're $15 each, and if you want to bring two of them, Two, it's $25 per couple. Sounds terrific. We're looking forward to seeing movies under the stars this year in Kingston. Thanks, guys. That's it for this week's show. We'd like to thank Chris Silva of the Ulster Performing Arts Center. To find out more about the great shows they've got coming up, go to upac.org or find them on Facebook. Thanks to Andy Turco Levin and David Daw and Janae McDonough of Movies Under the Stars. To find out more about them and this week's fundraiser at the Old Dutch Church, go to kingstonparksmovies.org and they're also on Facebook. Remember, all our shows are now archived on our YouTube channel. You can find the link on our Facebook page. You can also suggest topics for future shows on Facebook, too. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buff. See you next time.